Hey, it's Bruce Naylor. Welcome to another installment of Coffee Break. Today's coffee mug is my Harley Davidson coffee mug. Uh, at one time, my wife and I used to be big into motorcycles. We had Gold Wings, we had Har uh, Harleys, we've had Hondas. Well, actually, a Gold Wing is a Honda. But uh, we really used to love riding bikes, but not so much anymore. But I get to hear the Harleys all day long going up and down the road. So enjoy yourselves out there. If you do ride a bike, be safe, be careful. Remember, you got to be looking for the, the uh, people driving the cars and trucks and not relying on them to look for you. Just a safety tip out there. Uh, also, I just recently posted a video. Uh, it's a channel update. And as I said that I can't really do these day in and day out. It doesn't work for me, at least not Monday through Friday. But I do believe I can do at least one a week. Now, I'm going to start posting these every Monday morning. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I've had I've asked the audience what day of the week they think would be best. And I've gotten all kinds of answers. Mondays, Wednesdays, uh, some on Friday. Nobody ever mentioned a Tuesday or a Thursday, though. That's interesting. So we're going to try it on Monday morning. Because why? You, get, you know, some people have the back-to-work blues on Monday. So maybe this might be something you might enjoy before you get that work week started off or somewhere doing work. you get the idea but grab that favorite cup of coffee beverage whatever it is and join me as we answer a few viewer questions on today's installment of coffee break now the first question comes from uh let's see here it comes from uh ike lowry or mike i'm sorry mike lowry who uh, writes can you suggest uh some budget microphones for youtube recording less than twenty dollars so can you suggest some budget microphones for YouTube video recording less than 20 bucks? Well, hey, that's a great question, Mike. And there's, uh, if depends on the kind of mic you're looking at. I would not recommend really any desktop uh, microphone in that price range. I think you're going to find some pretty poor quality out there, toy-like builds, just not really good stuff in that price range. But what I can recommend, because it's something I personally use, is the Audio Technica ATR 3350 lav mic? Now it's not in your twenty dollar budget. In fact, it's thirty dollars. But I have one personally. I used it for a long, long time. It is a great sounding lav mic. It's wired. Let me just go over a few of the pros of this microphone. Number one, uh, it is relatively inexpensive with great sound. It comes from Audio Technica, a well respected name in audio. So that's important. It also has, it's also battery powered. This is one of the things about labs. Uh, some of them require what we call phantom power, or they derive their power from the device they're attached to. And a lot of, if you're looking to connect this directly to your PC, your motherboard may not supply the power to it that it needs. Uh, it, uh, I've tested this one with my PC and it worked just fine. Also, my MacBook Pro it worked just fine. It'll work with uh, uh, it'll work with your uh, so your laptops. It'll plug right into your camera. You can use it with that because it's got a battery already in it, so it's already got its own power source. That makes it really nice. The other thing is it is wired, but it's a very long cable. It is six meters, so that puts it just under twenty feet long. So that can be very very handy. You don't have to necessarily go out and buy an extension cable if you're hooking it directly up to your camera. If your camera is at a you know, kind of a distance right there. There's some other labs on the market as well in that around that $20 price range. But be careful when you're looking at them because they may require that power source. So are there any cons to this microphone? And there's really just two of them I can think of. The biggest con is there is no battery strength indicator on there. So it just works and then it will just die, the battery. But don't worry, you get a good long life out of the battery. In fact, I never actually had the battery fail on me at recording, but you have no clue as to how much life is left in that battery. The second con uh, is one of the features, which is that six meter cable. It's almost 20 feet long, and that makes it kind of unwieldy working with such a long cable, especially if you don't need that much cable. Now, ultimately, I ended up moving to an Aspen, a company called Aspen, their lab, and I actually got turned on to this by another YouTuber called The Frugal Filmmaker. And he swears by these Aspen lamps. And I got to admit, I think the sound's a little better. The cable is shorter. But then I no longer record directly uh, from the lab into the camera. Rather, it goes into a digital recorder. 
Of course, I also happen to enjoy my shotgun mics, and actually there's some not too bad sounding shotguns out there for a little bit more than 20 bucks. You get around that, about that 50 to to $100 range when you start talking shotgun mics for your camera. Great question, and hopefully you will find the mic that you're looking for. Okay, the next is kind of interesting. It's from Stacy Luster, who basically made a comment on one of my videos, and then posted another comment on a different video, but asking a question. Rather than reading this lengthy stuff, I'll just kind of bottom, bottom line it for you. Stacy uh, wrote about one of the videos I made about uh, Apple not making upgradable hardware anymore. And mentioned that uh, Stacy had been given a 2009 iMac and I think an iPhone, uh, but would not actually buy a Apple product because of the lack of upgradable hardware, etc. So that was a statement. But then uh, Stacy goes on further in a, the one that has a question, says that uh, Stacy is a Macintosh user. However, the internal drive on the Mac died and is now using Windows 10 on external drive hooked up to the Mac and it all kind of works. Uh, and wants to know uh, when that, that Mac dies, should Stacy buy a fully spec iMac or a custom built PC? And Stacy, Honestly, you answered your own question in your other statement. You said that you would not buy another Apple product. You're already working in the Windows environment. You seem to be content with that. There is really, unless you're using something, the Mac, for specific software such as Final Cut Pro 10, Logic, something like that, there's really no compelling reason for you to have OS 10 when you're going to be using it with Windows. Why not just get a custom-built PC which you'll be able to build far less money than you would have fully spec'd out uh, 21.5 inch iMac. So why waste the money there? You already know what you want. So you've answered your own question. Go the custom built PC. You're going to be happy and you're going to save some cash. And I mean, a Mac, if you use OS 10, that's the whole reason you want a you know solid Mac platform is to use Mac OS 10. The next question comes from Sid Cannon. Sid has wrote in before, been a great viewer of the show. Hi, Sid, how you doing? Wants to know if I personally turn off the window telemetry settings or do I leave them at default? What is it that I do? Sid, I'll leave it at default. Um, I know what I'm, because I'm in this network security business, uh, there's nothing that I'm overly concerned with that Microsoft is collecting that really bothers me. That being said, there's a number of you that it does bother you, and some of you go so far as to download apps such as Destroy Windows Spying and uh, SpyBots, what's it called, Anti-Beacon. There's a problem with those, however. They do good and bad things. Those programs work by changing the settings on your PC to turn off the telemetry. That's good. The bad thing is they also mess with your host file, and they will block access to certain Microsoft servers. So... Some of them may stop uh, Windows updates from happening and or uh, screw up services on other Windows applications, such as Skype. Uh, can, they can mess those up as well. So don't, uh, I, my strongest recommendation is absolutely do not use those scripts or applications that uh, remove or stop Windows telemetry settings. Rather, go through and do that yourself. I've got a link to an article on just what to do in the description down below. I think that'll wrap up this week's installment of Coffee Break. Have a great week out there, everybody. And remember, this show depends on you asking your questions down below. Appreciate those thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Bruce Naylor, take care, everybody.